Hi everyone. In this lecture, we will try and analyze the bandpass transfer function, a simple second order bandpass transfer function. Uh, we will try to do an intuitive analysis based on the ideas that we have developed so far. I mean, using Q omega naught. Okay. So we will try to predict the shape of a bandpass, the, the dependence of the shape of the bandpass characteristic on these parameters. Now, what is the bandpass characteristic? So, what did we do? The two, I mean, so far, uh, when we discussed about series and parallel RLC circuits, in the first case, we fed a current and measured the voltage across the series RLC tank. And the transfer function is nothing but the impedance of the, uh, sorry, the parallel RLC tank. We just fed a current to a parallel RLC tank and measured the voltage across it. The transfer function, where voltage is the output and current is the input, is nothing but the impedance of the parallel RLC circuit. And that was given by this expression. And when we plotted this function at omega equal to 0, it was 0, it reaches a peak value at omega equal to omega naught, and then it goes to 0 as omega tends to infinity, where omega naught was 1 by root LC. In the same way, this function in the in a series RLC circuit, we fed a voltage source and then we measured the current which was flowing in the series RLC circuit. So the output variable was current and input was voltage. And the transfer function here happens to be the admittance of the series RLC circuit. Now the admittance of a series RLC circuit is also a bandpass characteristic, meaning what do I mean by bandpass here is that if you look at it, it looks like a filter which passes, which, which has a gain, maximum gain for a band of frequencies and then outside the band, the gain is very low or in fact it is zero or far away from the band of frequencies. So that's why it's called band pass filter, it passes only a band of frequencies and it rejects frequencies outside this band of interest. So in this lecture, we'll try to derive, uh, derive a generalized expression for a band pass uh, transfer function and then try to work out many intuitive results which will be useful uh, when, when, when whenever you encounter such bandpass transfer function maybe in radio frequency circuits okay and I felt this was the right place to discuss that um, so all the passive circuits that we have developed so far eventually they'll be used the ideas will be used in analyzing active circuits uh, so this I mean this set of lectures is more like laying the foundations eventually for the you know when you I mean when you're going to apply these passive circuits passive elements circuit elements in uh, in, in, in active circuits uh, you'll, you'll understand the applications what I'm discussing right now so first a general bandpass characteristic here if you look at the transfer function here uh, just to uh, refresh your memory so here it has one zero at zero at s equal to zero you have a zero and then it has two poles so you can see that at low frequencies you will first encounter zero so the transfer, your transfer function will keep increasing and when it encounters one pole it's going to flatten out and it, when, when it encounters another pole it's going to start drooping down and eventually it goes to zero. So to get a bandpass characteristic you need one zero of DC the I mean the minimum uh, the, the, the lowest order bandpass which is a second order bandpass transfer function you need one pole one zero at DC okay and then two poles. So I'm going to write a general transfer function here denoted by this function. So again, uh, to denote a bandpass transfer characteristic, we are going to use a resonant frequency, which is the point where the gain of this function is going to be maximum. And we'll also define a parameter Q. We said very briefly in the previous lectures, it tells you how narrow the transfer function is. Okay or how frequency selective the function is. I mean, what is the range of frequencies? It will give you an idea about the range of frequencies it's going to pass or, or not reject. Okay, so I've written the bandpass transfer characteristic in this equation. Uh, you can see that at the resonant frequency, these two terms will cancel out. So you'll be left with S by omega naught by S by omega naught, so you'll get one. And I've multiplied this with H max, so which is nothing but H max is the maximum gain of this bandpass transfer function or the, band, uh, the bandpass uh, uh, frequency response. So shown here is the frequency response, the magnitude response of this transfer function. At the resonant frequency omega equal to omega naught, the value is H max. Okay. And 
if you look at this function, uh, you know, since it has a maximum and it's going to decay down, you can see it like a filter. So when you define a filter, we normally define the point where, uh, especially when you define first order systems, uh, we'll later show that in the, in the next point, in, the, in, the, in a few moments, that a bandpass filter behaves like a first order low pass filter around the resonant frequency. Okay, so in that, we can actually define two frequencies where the gain becomes one by root two of its maximum value. Okay, so and that uh, we also discussed. Uh, I mean, uh, the idea of one by root. Uh, the I mean, the idea of omega one and omega two, which we called it as the bandwidth of the system, the three D, uh, the bandwidth of the uh, bandpass filter. And how did we find that was? So first, we'll try write the transfer function in terms of omega, as shown here. Now we need this transfer function to approach h by root 2, h max by root 2, the transfer function should become 1 by root 2 of its maximum value. Now if I look at this function here, so this term and this term are same. Okay, so the denom denominator should become, even the real part should be equal to the imaginary part, then you will get root 2 times the, uh, root 2 times the, uh, the, 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 the numerator function. Okay, so if you want this, the, I mean, uh, you want this whole function, to be 1 by root 2 okay so all I'm saying is that that will happen if the second term here which is the, the the term here if it becomes equal to omega by omega naught q okay in that case you will get this as 1 by root 2 and so that's the frequency we need to find out so all we need to do is I mean in fact it can be plus minus omega by omega naught q so we'll just equate this term to this so you'll have two quadratic equations for plus omega by omega naught q and minus omega by omega naught q, you will actually have two quadratic equations. So you will have four solutions, out of which we are going to ignore the negative solutions and we then we will get omega 1 and omega 2. So here I have written omega 2 comma 1, 2 is positive, so which is this term, root of omega naught square plus omega naught by 2q, the whole square, plus omega naught by 2q and minus omega naught by 2q will be for omega 1, we are calling that as omega 1. And we already said, we already got these rules for a parallel and series RLC circuits in one of the previous lectures. And we said that both omega 1 and omega 2 are geometrically spaced, meaning the product of omega 2 into omega 1 is omega naught square, or omega naught is the geometric mean of omega 2 and omega 1. So we said that they are geometrically spaced around omega naught. Now to have a better understanding of this transfer function, we are going to make some assumptions and then analyze this uh, transfer function. So one of the first things is, we are going to assume that q is much greater than 1. When you make that assumption, you can, in this expression of omega naught, you can ignore this term compared to omega naught. Okay. So then we will have omega 2 as omega naught plus omega naught by 2q and omega 1 as omega naught minus omega naught by 2q. So in this case, if you see here, omega naught happens to be the arithmetic mean of omega 1 and omega 2. So now, both omega 2 and omega 1 are, as shown in this figure, I can, I can say that they both are equally spaced, you know, around omega naught. Okay. Now, uh, we have defined, I mean, another important parameter, so which is the 3 dB bandwidth. So, I mean, to define uh, a bandpass characteristic, we need to know what is the peak gain and what is the frequency at which it is attaining the peak gain. And we also define another parameter, which is the 3 dB bandwidth, the two frequencies where the gain becomes 1 by root 2 of its peak value. Okay, so now uh, we'll try to understand because it's a, I mean, since it's going to pass only a small range of frequencies, okay, we don't really need to find, I mean, there isn't much of information at very high frequencies or very low frequencies for this transfer function because it's going to reject anyways those frequencies. But what we are interested in is the frequency is close to omega naught, where it is going to pass a small range of frequencies. So for that, we will try to evaluate this transfer function, HBP of omega, which the bandpass transfer function, I'm calling it as HBP of omega, and this is, sorry, there is into H max here. We will try to evaluate it at omega naught plus delta omega, a small frequency, delta omega, away from omega naught. So this is, we are trying to analyze what happens at a small frequency away from omega naught. So for that, I'm going to substitute 
And here again, we are going to make this assumption that delta omega is much smaller than omega naught. So we are going to substitute omega uh, omega naught. I mean, sorry, omega with omega naught plus delta omega. Okay. So this term, I am going to assume that omega naught plus delta omega is approximately omega naught itself. So this numerator will just reduce to j by q, and this term, the de this term will also reduce to j by q here. Whereas this term, we can very easily show if I ignore if I ignore the delta omega square term, I can very easily reduce this to minus 2 delta omega by omega naught. Okay. Uh, then, by just rearranging the terms, we can actually get an expression. So, the, we'll, I'll, I'll just show you the final equation, which is this. I mean, you can very easily show that you'd get this expression for h of omega plus delta omega naught for small frequencies omega naught away from uh, or delta omega away from omega naught. Now this function actually reminds us of something. I mean this is if you look at this function it's actually a simple first order low pass filter right. I mean the first order low pass filter transfer function will be um, I'm assuming here sorry the gain is h max here. So I'll assume a first order low pass filter with a dc gain of h max. So this can be written as delta delta omega is frequency away from omega naught here. I'm just going to write it as omega okay with a pole a single pole of omega p so this reminds us of a transfer function of a first order uh, low pass filter which we have already discussed extensively in the previous lectures now when we discuss about first order low pass filter so we have to discuss uh, for a first order low pass filter the unique parameters are one is the dc gain or the low, the maximum gain the second thing is the pole we need to know what is the omega p or the pole for this uh, low pass filter. These two parameters uniquely determine the first order low pass filter. Okay. Now, we will try to understand what does a low pass filter do at frequencies far away from omega p. You know, uh, we are interested in finding what happens at frequencies. Of course, at frequencies far less than omega p, the gain is very close to h max. But frequencies far away from omega p, if you find the magnitude, we can write it as h max into omega p by omega. In fact, uh, what happens is that this term will become much greater than 1. So, you can, it will reduce to this. So, this term h p into omega p by omega is actually the gain of the or the gain of this transfer function at omega. Far away where omega is far away from omega p. So, this is your omega p. Omega p is the point where the gain becomes 1 by root 2 of its maximum value. Uh, we are already aware of that. This is for a first order system. The 3 dB bandwidth happens to be the pole. Now, at frequencies far away from omega p, we said that the gain is going to reduce. You know, this value, this value here is going to be much smaller than h max. It's smaller than h max. Now, I'll use a word called rejection instead of gain. Of course, the gain is going to be much smaller. Okay. Say, for example, I'm omega is 10 times omega p then the gain is going to be one tenth of uh, you know the dc the maximum value at omega at omega equal to 10 omega p the gain is going to be h max by 10 the magnitude of the gain is going to be h max by 10 so i can say that there is an attenuation or rejection of a, by a factor of 10 okay i can say that the gain is attenuated by a factor of 10 or the rejection the i mean the rejection at this frequency is 10 okay so rejection is simply the inverse of the attenuation uh, i just use that word that i mean it's just becomes simpler to describe uh, the filtering action of the first order low pass filter and even the band pass filters so rejection is just the amount by which the gain reduces okay now here we can see that I have shown in the pink color here, if I reduce the pole, if I reduce my pole frequency omega p, then for the same value of omega, okay, at the same value of omega, you are going to get a better rejection or a lower gain. Or a better rejection means how it is reduced by a larger value. Here if you see the value is going to be smaller compared to what it was before. So from this we can say that it is going to become more narrower around the origin if you reduce your omega p. Okay, so now I'm going to go back to the bandpass transfer function that we derived. So we said that 
for h of omega plus delta omega we got a transfer function which looked like a first order low pass filter now in this case the 3 db bandwidth for this first order low pass filter or the pole is going to be omega not by 2q so if you look at this expression we had omega not by 2q here as the pole if i write it in this form i can write it as omega not by 2q so what this equation tells us is that a, a first order or a simple second order band pass filter behaves like a first order low pass filter when you look at it around omega not okay say you are able to stand exactly on the frequency response plot at omega not then when you look around omega not it's going to look like as though you are standing on top of a low pass filter okay if you are able to see from here on either sides it will look as though it's actually a low pass filter around omega not so i've used a word called frequency translated low pass filter so low pass filter gives you filtering free frequency selective behavior around omega equal to 0 a band pass filter behaves like a low pass filter or gives you a frequency selective behavior around omega not a center frequency omega not in this case it turns out to be the resonant frequency which is 1 by root lc again uh, we can very easily show that for omega not minus delta omega also you are going to get a transfer function like this and we can very easily see that the magnitudes of both this you know mod of h of omega not plus delta omega for large values of q this is going to be same omega not minus delta omega okay so now we will comment on so this now that we have uh, uh, discussed that a band pass transfer function can be expressed as a frequency transitive low pass characteristic so therefore again you need only two parameters uh, to to characterize a low pass characteristic one is h max the the maximum gain and the 3 db frequency which is omega not by 2q okay so here i am already assuming that we know omega not you know we have once we have frequency shifted it we know omega not so the only remaining uh, omega 3 db also contains information about the q of the transfer function now what happens if i increase q if i increase q what happens here is the 3 db frequency reduces meaning this function the point where it's going to reach initially the 3 db frequency was somewhere here now it's going to reduce okay the which means the function is going to become more narrow okay so a larger q means a more narrow response here i'm assuming that the peak gain remains the same peak gain is h max that is constant but i've just changed the q keeping the resonant frequency constant omega not constant i've just increased the q by increasing the q the 3 db bandwidth reduces and therefore the function becomes more narrower the transfer function or the frequency response becomes more narrower around omega not now we'll try to compute what happens to the gain of this transfer function at an omega at at delta omega which is greater than 3 db frequency but still it is far less than omega not i mean because we derived this transfer function with an with an approximation that delta omega is still much less than omega not okay it's greater than the 3 db frequency but still it's much less than the omega not itself in that case we can just from this transfer function uh, like how we derived it for a low pass filter we can simply write the attenuation is going to be h max into omega 3 db by delta omega okay now if your 3 db frequency is lower if your 3 db frequency is lower you are going to get a lower gain at the same delta omega i am going to compare two band pass characteristics one uh, for example shown here in the in pink here in this figure i have shown it in pink here so this these are two different band pass characteristics one with a lower 3 db than the other then we can say that at a given delta omega the pink one is going to be have a better rejection okay or a lower gain or or better rejection at a frequency offset delta omega at the same frequency offset now as you keep increasing q as you keep increasing q this function is going to become more and more narrower you know it's going to become more and more narrower so this function is going to go more and more uh narrower as you keep increasing q okay now uh we saw that yes 
of course the uh, we assumed it's it's omega naught by 2q is a 3 dB frequency we saw what happens when you increase q by keeping omega naught constant now we will analyze the same transfer function we will keep q constant and then change omega naught and then see what happens to the uh, 3 dB bandwidth and all that now let's say I change my bandwidth by 10 omega naught uh, sorry the resonant frequency to 10 omega naught now how do you change that in case of an LC circuit I can simply uh, reduce the value of L and C by factor of 10 and 10 so it's going to increase now what's going to happen to the 3 dB frequency is that now let's say somehow I'm going to keep the Q constant I'm not changing the Q I'm keeping the Q constant so if I keep the Q constant what happens to the 3 dB frequency is that if you look at this function the 3 dB frequency is going to increase by 10 times because the new 3 dB frequency is going to be 10 omega naught by 2 Q. Okay, so all I did here was that I just increased omega naught to 10 omega naught. So the 3 dB frequency, new 3 dB frequency became 10 omega naught by 2 Q. So now when I look at it around 10 omega naught, it's going to spread wider than what it was for omega naught for the same Q. Okay, so if I keep this Q same and just increase the center frequency, then what is going to happen is that the 3 dB bandwidth is going to increase. Okay, and which is why if I want to have the same narrowness or selectivity or rejection as it was for the case omega naught, then I have to increase the Q by 10 times. I mean, I'll just keep the 3 dB frequency same. So by in this equation, we can see to keep the 3 dB frequency same, you just have to increase your Q also by 10 times. So the ratio will remain the same. Okay. So it will be 10 omega naught plus omega naught by 2Q and 10 omega naught minus omega naught by 2Q. That will be your uh, 3 dB bandwidths, 3 dB frequencies. Okay. So which means to get the same rejection at a certain frequency offset at a higher resonant frequency you need to have a higher Q okay that's what the mathematics is telling us and this analysis is telling us by using the analysis using a low pass filter we can very easily see that I mean if from this equation okay from this equation as you increased omega naught your omega 3 dB also increased by a factor of 10 but to get the same rejection as you are getting at omega equal to omega naught you have to increase your Q also by a factor of 10 so that the omega 3 dB remains the same. Okay, so this is one of the very, very, very important points in when you design radio frequency circuits where we will find the applications of parallel and series RLT circles extensively. Okay, so when you move to higher frequencies, it's difficult to get better rejection or it's difficult to realize very narrow transfer functions because the Q required will become much higher. Okay, so this is a very important point and I just wanted to mention this at this point because we have done the necessary analysis to understand this and so this is something that can be understood purely from passive circuit analysis. You don't need to, uh, you know, do a, you know, an active circuit analysis to understand this. So I just thought of uh, mentioning it very briefly here. So now the final point of discussion here, I mean, now that we have analyzed uh, the band pass transfer function as a frequency translated low pass transfer function there is one other point which uh, which is very interesting we, we, i mean we'll see another interesting uh, application of doing this approximation okay one of that is trying to find the energy of the transfer function so which is nothing but 1 by 2 pi integral of uh, mod of h of omega the whole square d omega so this again it constantly, I mean, I'll tell you the application where it figures in. Right now, you don't need to know that. It's just a mathematical problem. I'm just trying to tell you it's much easier to solve uh, by using this analysis. So we'll just uh, see what it is. So this is the energy of the uh, transfer function. Okay, we'll try to compute it for a low pass filter first. For a low pass filter, uh, the transfer function is H max square. Uh, sorry, uh, the transfer function is the magnitude square is simply going to be H max square uh, into 1 by 1 plus omega p the whole square d omega 
integral minus infinity plus infinity. Again, this is going to be tan inverse of x and you just have to make one substitution. Uh, you can very easily show that this result by into that is 1 by 2 pi. This result will simply reduce to h, h max square into omega p by 2. Okay, uh, I mean it's a pretty straightforward result. I'm not even deriving it. You just make omega p omega by omega p as x, then you know d omega is going to be omega p into dx. So you will get uh, h max square into omega p, and you know one by one plus x square. The integral is tan inverse of x. So tan inverse x. When I substitute plus infinity and minus infinity, you will get pi by two minus of pi minus pi by two. Uh, I'm just saying everything in words, but. I think it's pretty easy to follow. Most of you have done any 12 standard mathematics will be able to follow this. So you'd simply get h max squared by 2. I can, you, I'll leave that to you. It's a very simple integration. You'd get this result. Okay. Now, uh, this is a very simple result to derive for a low pass transfer function. Now, if I give you a transfer function like this, h of omega, and ask you to find the integration, the same integration for a band pass, which is h bp of f, bp of omega, then how would you do that? Now what we will do is that we will just, what we, sh what we showed previously was that first we had a low pass transfer characteristic which was centered at omega equal to 0, okay, and we define the 3 dB bandwidth or which was the pole in that case which we call it omega p. Now what we are going to do is that what we what we discussed in the uh, what we discussed few moments ago was that a bandpass filter can be seen as a frequency translated so this is a positive frequencies and negative frequencies a frequency translated version of a low pass filter so I'll just So it's a frequency translated version of a low pass filter translated to both minus and plus omega naught. Okay. So now what are we doing in this function is that uh, we are just what what did we do here is that we are supposed to square this function. With this function we have to it is already the magnitude you have to square and find the area under this integral and divide it by 1 by 2 pi that's what we are supposed to do now we showed that for a low pass filter when i integrate square and integrate this this value i'm assuming h max is the peak value turns out to be h max square into omega 3 db by 2. now in case of a band pass characteristic if you look at it I am going to integrate over both the positive and negative frequencies in this transfer in the, in this frequency response. So if I integrate the positive half, that's same as the integral value for the entire low pass characteristic. So here I am going to get if I integrate the positive half, I am going to get h max square. As I said, this is like a low pass filter. It's just a frequency translated version, but the area under the graph should be same for this and this. It's only the frequency, the origin has been shifted, that's it. So that's not going to change the value of the integral. Okay, I'm just going to square it and integrate it. So it's going to be h max square into omega 3 dB by 2. And similarly, for this as well, if I integrate this, I'm going to get for the negative half cycle, again, I'm going to get for the negative frequencies, I'm going to get h max square into omega 3 dB by 2. So when I add the overall, the, I mean, since the overall integra integral runs from minus infinity to plus infinity, I have to add both these results. I am going to get h max square into omega 3 dB. So this is nothing but h max square into omega naught by 2 q. And this is the exact result which you will get if you evaluate this integral. You know, it's a, it's a, it's very complicated integral to solve it. It's more rigorous uh, than for a simple low pass filter. But then by since we made this approximation of a low pass filter, we can get the same result far more intuitively by just using the result, a known result for a uh, low pass filter. Okay, we said that the band pass filter is a frequency translated uh, low pass filter. So using that, we can very easily derive this value. So this is one other application for, you know, the analysis that we did just now. Okay. 
uh, I mean, it, it, it finds applications in noise analysis. Okay, so let me just quickly summarize what we discussed in this lecture is we derived a general transfer function, a bandpass transfer characteristic. And we will encounter such bandpass transfer functions mainly in radio frequency circuits and tuned amplifiers, okay, where you need gain in only a small range of frequencies. We discussed that a bandpass characteristic can be seen as a low pass characteristic around the resonant frequency, or, or rather a frequency translated low pass characteristic. And we define, since for a low pass characteristic, we have to define that we know the max value, the only thing is we need to define a 3 dB bandwidth. 3 dB frequency, we define the 3 dB frequency as omega naught by 2q. And we said if your q is very high, if your q is very high, then it's going to be more narrower. The function is going to be more narrower. Okay. And uh, we also discussed the effect of increasing omega naught and what happens to the narrowness of this function or the selectivity or the rejection offered by this function at a certain frequency okay Ome delta omega away from the resonant frequency we said having a higher q always gives you a better rejection and we said that the gain the attenuation is actually given by h max into omega 3 db by delta omega so at a frequency delta omega the rejection is actually proportional to or rather the the, the reduction in the gain is actually proportional. So if you have a lower 3 dB frequency, or rather I would say, let me write it as omega naught by 2q. Oh, this is o omega naught by 2q. So if I have a higher q, I'm going to have a better rejection at delta omega. Okay, if I keep increasing q, I'll get better and better rejection. That you can see from this itself. So if at any frequency, as you keep increasing the q, the function becomes more narrower, which means it gives you better rejection or the gain reduces more and more as you increase the value of q. So this is a very important point. And finally, we discussed a very interesting mathematical result, which is we try to compute the energy of the transfer function. And uh, for a bandpass transfer function, it, it turns out to be a slightly complicated expression. But by using the approximation of a low pass filter, we could very easily derive that result. And we showed that the total value was h max square into 3 omega 3 db which was h max square into omega naught by 2q you can derive this uh, you know it will be a probably a, a pro little bit a uh, bit of a more painstaking derivation but eventually uh, you'd get this result okay and that result i'm saying you don't have to go through that but instead by using the approximation you can intu intuitively derive that okay so i'll uh, stop at this point